Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another Potato Danger 5 GMO Challenge Run, where today we're trying two characters that on their own are pretty good, but when combined together are going to be incredibly difficult to play. These two characters pull in completely different directions. The King costs us HP every time we have a level 1 item, uh, which means that if we buy a lot of level 1 items, our HP is going to be incredibly low. And the Renegade requires us to buy level 1 items in order to gain additional damage. Without it, we simply won't have damage. So we're going to have to be very careful with what level 1 items we buy. If we buy none, we won't be able to kill anything, which obviously is bad. But if we buy too many, we'll be at 1 HP and still have pretty low damage because both of these characters take a while to come online. Uh, since you need to find a bunch of level 1 items for the Renegade, you need to find high level items for the King. To balance that out, we do have the Renegade's very powerful bonus projectiles and the King's powerful bonus starting luck. But overall, this is just going to be an extremely difficult combination because the character's synergy or anti-synergy is so strong. Uh... As to what weapon we start with, I think there's a couple options here. We obviously want to start with a ranged weapon because we're going to be the Renegade. So we definitely want to make sure that we are leaning into that. Well, we could start with a melee weapon and then just buy ranged weapons because the Renegade can only find ranged weapons in the shop. It's going to be better just to, to start with a ranged weapon, I think. I think the natural pick here is to just start with the submachine gun and see if we can make that work. And then if that doesn't work, uh, we will have to reconsider. I think it's possible that it won't because getting the, the damage per bullet from one to two on the submachine gun for this build is actually going to be pretty challenging. Uh, so we may end up not having the damage to kill enemies in sort of the mid game. I also played wave one pretty bad. I moved in such a way that we only made 55. We probably should have had more early game money um, if I had done a little bit better movement. Notice also we've got nine health after leveling up because we started with eight health. That's because in GMO, you start with this GMO item, which does count for the king. So we lose two HP for that. Uh, but we do also get some percentage damage from the renegade for having the, the GMO item. Um, the HP loss is more significant, though. I'm going to roll here. I'm looking for harvesting or range damage, and I'll start with some harvesting. We're going to need to build that up at some point, I think. Rolling for submachine guns. Weird Ghost I will lock because this is going to be HP positive and damage positive for us, so that's great. So any level 1 item that gives us health, uh, we definitely want to buy on this character. Buy this SMG, and then roll, and... Roll again. Really looking for another SMG. Okay, we missed, so things not going great so far. In the early waves, it should be okay that we missed a lot on weapons, but later on that could come back to cost us, because for the king, you really don't want to have level 1 weapons, since you take large penalties for having level 1 weapons equipped, and we want to hit a level 4 weapon as soon as we can for the bonuses. So... Missing on early weapons is really painful for this character combination. Do I take minus 2 HP, minus 1 armor for 5% attack speed, some range, and some percentage damage? I think I do on the Gummy Berserker, so we get a little bit of percentage damage there. Um, I think we have to be fairly aggressive with buying level 1 items, even ones that are normally not amazing, because otherwise we just will never have the damage to actually clear waves. I'm gonna roll twice here. I'm again looking for ranged damage or harvesting. I guess I'll buy some some harvesting early. And a roll for SMGs. The sharp bullet is probably worth buying because piercing damage is so good for submachine guns. Although wait, the renegade has uh, inherent piercing, so yeah, we don't need to buy the sub the um, sharp bullet roll and we've locked another submachine gun. The question here is, do I combine these? Um, I think the answer is actually no. We're taking a significant damage penalty from the king, but that damage penalty is actually reduced by the renegade's percent damage modification reduction. Um, so minus 25% attack speed, definitely a problem, but I'd rather have minus 25% attack speed and three weapons than only two weapons, I think. So we're going to accept the attack speed penalty because we're basically, you know, by adding one extra weapon over 
uh, the second, we're taking a minus 25% penalty to our attack speed, but adding 50% more attacks because we just have 50% uh, more weapons. So we're still doing more attacks this way than if I had combined those weapons. And because our percentage damage is so low, the level 2 SMGs don't actually do more damage than the level 1 ones right now. Everything's just capped at 1 damage. Making 98 this wave, not amazing. Uh, definitely, we are a little behind on income. I'll take one ranged damage here, and I will take 2% lifesteal. That could be a pretty significant bonus for us as we continue to level up. So we'll grab that. We will take the SMG, and I'll take the, the weird ghost. Uh, so that gives us plus 1 HP and some bonus damage, which is nice. Uh, the weird ghost was effectively free. The coffee will... Uh, give me 10 damage and cost me 2. So it's damage positive, and attack speed is, of course, very relevant, but HP negative. I think going to 9 HP for buying a very efficient item like coffee is pretty good. And then, do I buy the alien worm? It is HP positive, but cost me healing, which is going to be very important. But I think the alien worm is worth picking up as well here. We will heal very quickly once I get even just a little bit of lifesteal on this character. So managing our HP is going to be the most important thing. The SMGs, do I want to combine them? I think, again, no. We'd actually rather, weirdly enough, because of the way that this character functions, we would rather have where the damage penalty uh, where we have such a large initial damage penalty that level 2 weapons don't do more damage than level 1 weapons right now. Uh, we would actually rather not combine our early weapons, even though we're playing the king. Even with only 2% lifesteal, we should be healing back to full health relatively rapidly here, because we have so many attacks. But you can see we are starting to fall behind in terms of damage output, and... The floaters are going to be a real pain for this character going forwards because we only do one damage per shot. So since they spawn a projectile every time they're hit by a projectile, that's going to be a lot of incoming projectiles for us to it, try to evade. I didn't make it back around to pick up this big pod of uh, materials, which is unfortunate. I will take the turret. That'll take me down to 9 HP. But turret's pretty good for wave clear on the Renegade because it, it benefits from the triple shots and extra piercing. Reroll here, and we'll take harvesting, going up to 21. A level 2 SMG, that's awesome. Very happy to see that. Do I want the beanie, or do I reroll for a weapon here? I think I'm going to reroll for a weapon. Uh, if I can pick up another submachine gun, that would be good. I will lock the coupon. We're guaranteed to see a weapon. Do I reroll for 10? I really need to level these up as soon as I can, so I am going to reroll. Yeah, and so that did end up working out. Next, need to find the more health. Our turret spawning right in the middle of the arena is nice, because it actually does way more damage than we do right now, so it's going to help with our wave clear significantly, especially since it spawned in a good location. Would love to get some XP gain, because one of the ways in which we're going to be able to keep our HP high enough over the course of the, the game is if we can get relatively aggressive leveling going. 200 on wave 5, feeling decent about that. Do I lose 4 harvesting? That'll slow my harvesting growth, because we'll dip back below 21. But 2% lifesteal is pretty valuable, so I think the blood leech is worth it. We'll take a ranged damage here, and then I could start building dodge with 9%. Um, I really would prefer this with HP. I think I'm going to roll. Buying dodge when our HP is going to be so low just doesn't make much sense to me, so I'm going to roll for health or just more damage. 12% damage gets reduced by 80%, so this is a pretty small increase to our damage output. Um, but I think I'm going to take it anyways, going up to negative 74, because if I don't do that, we're going to have to reroll for 11 there, which is getting just out of control expensive. Take the coupon. We will take the SMG. Do I go to 5 HP to buy these two items? That's kind of brutal, but they're both very good items. I think I do. 
Gonna re-roll here. Uh, very happy to be able to combine weapons. Do I buy a lemonade? I don't think it's worth locking the lemonade. Um, because I just need to find more health. So we're hoping to level up. I'm gonna roll very aggressively when I level up. Great spawn on the turret again. In order to try to find more health. Wave 6, we are still in quite a lot of danger, because we have 5 HP. And Wave 6 does have floaters spawn, so if I get hit by even a single projectile... Okay, yep, I walk right into the enemies there. So, uh, that was slightly poor dodging. I think we could have been okay there if I had dodged better, but it's possible I just need to keep a better HP buffer for in order to succeed on this uh, challenge. That was just mean, like, not paying good enough attention. Much better income wave one, though, because I had better movement there. Take the five harvesting and gentle alien. This is HP even uh, and gives us percent damage and more enemies. So that's perfect. Take the submachine gun. We'll roll cake. I also have to lock because we just need to buy anything that's HP positive on this build. And then again, we'll we won't combine submachine guns in the early game. Looking forward to that Gentle Alien as well to increase our income. And Gentle Alien also, you know, more alien spawns is more XP, more XP is more HP. So it, it all really snowballs together, especially in the early game like that. Bag, of course, a great find, which we will happily take. And then here, uh, I'm just going to take three health, I think, rather than one ranged damage. Mm, yeah, I think we, we can just buy early health instead of buying early damage. Uh, let's roll for another submachine gun. Perfect. Definitely off to a better start here. Part of the issue we were having last time was that we hadn't found upgraded submachine guns, so our damage was very low. Going from one to two damage is huge because that's half as many projectiles that the Firstly, it's half as many shots to kill an enemy, so it's, it's a massive increase to our effective damage output. Um, but it's also half as many projectiles that the floaters spawn, so really important to reach that breakpoint and go from 1 to 2 damage. I'm going to reroll here, and do I take armor, percent damage? I'll just take 2 armor, um, and I will take 1 base damage. At 13 max HP with a couple HP items locked, I think I'm okay to just increase my uh, my damage output. Lock this submachine gun, lock this small magazine. Perfect. Currently only have three level one items, which is at least putting us in a decent position. <laughs> These are the slowest attacking submachine guns in history, but we've got a lot of projectiles coming out of them, so mostly doesn't matter. Income in these early waves is definitely an issue. Do I take luck, crit chance, damage? I think I'm going to roll here. I really want to find max HP or harvesting, but I'll just take the max HP. I think that's actually going to be better for us than anything else we could find. We'll take the, the submachine gun. Minus 75% attack speed. Um, at what point does it become better to combine them? So we would go down to minus 60% attack speed, but have one fewer gun. Uh, so that's effectively our attack speed is increasing by one fifth and our weapons are increasing by um, one sixth to have six weapons. So I actually want to combine these weapons at this point. The math is a little more complicated than that, I think, but that's just like a good rule of thumb when I'm in the middle of a game to help me make a, a quick decision there.
sometimes I think people get really, really hung up on the sort of exact uh, tiny changes in numbers, which, you know, is understandable. It is a game about tiny changes in numbers. Um, but often you need to just make a decision that's decent rather than agonizing over specific small instances. And it's important to save your mental energy to focus on things that actually will change uh, the outcome of a run. Turret we're going to pick up here. We've actually managed to pick up 23 HP because I, I got some from a level up. Uh, losing lifesteal I don't think we can afford on this character. So even though my attack speed is pretty poor right now, I do, do want to avoid picking up the banner. The triceps here for bonus damage, I think we can pass on. Um, it's only like 2% damage, so I'd rather roll for flat ranged damage or max HP. Perfect. And then here, let's roll again. Dodge armor. Um, I'm going to grab one armor there just to try to stay alive a little bit better. Definitely do not want to cap my max HP at 27. Helmet here, I think we can pass on. This will cost me HP, so it's bad for my survivability, and I do want to roll for more submachine guns. Losing two or losing three attack speed for the defective steroids is worth it here, because it's HP even. So this is a way to increase our percent damage without losing health. Very important for this character. Roll again. Uh, we are banning the gold-plated teeth for these runs, so I won't pick that up. I will buy the submachine gun. And same principle, we're going to combine. And then now I can buy the defective steroids, basically spend three attack speed for two health, which on this build is worth it. On most builds, I wouldn't make that trade, but HP is going to be the thing we're struggling with the most on this character. Buy this submachine gun for sure, and then go to the next wave. Rerolling for 15 doesn't seem to make much sense. So right now, our damage is much lower than it was last time, but our health is much higher. So I think we're in better shape for this run. I also don't have any source of healing yet, so I need to fix that pretty soon, get some life steal going. Gonna have to navigate the incredible amount of projectiles that will be on the field at all times, of course, because we only deal one damage per shot. Whoops. <laughs> Put myself in a very poor situation there and just had to tank a bunch of damage to get to try to survive it oof all right so our damage was too low um let's try this one again making sure to move to the, the groups of enemies that spawn. I'll take three HP here, we'll buy a submachine gun, and then reroll. Uh, lock the gentle alien for sure, buy the submachine gun. Fertilizer's too good to pass up on, and we'll roll for another gun. Not only is this a hard run, I am also playing badly. Just walking into a lot of shots that I have no business getting hit by. Uh, here, I'm going to recycle this. I don't think we want to spend effort on that. I'll just take the range damage here. That'll pay off later on. Let's roll for some machine guns and roll. Okay, well, that's an awesome shop, of course. We have the entire shop locked now. You could definitely try this with a different weapon as well. Like, we could use Slingshot, maybe. Uh, that might be easier. Because the, the problem right now is the floaters. Here, I'm going to roll. I think I won't buy any harvesting. We're already sort of past the point where that's uh, good. Although, when we get a level 2 harvesting, never mind, we'll pick up some harvesting.
And I, I do have a fertilizer locked in the shop. I sort of forgot about that. All right, so SMG or yeah, level two SMG. I'll buy the fertilizer as well and then leave the level one locked. Um, possible there I should have bought the level one, left the level two locked and then rerolled because there's a chance of us getting a level one. Sub the chance of us rerolling into a level one submachine gun is higher. Um, this way we we just aren't going to reroll because we can't roll into a weapon or are unlikely to roll into a weapon. I, we could theoretically roll into another level two, but the level one was um, was locked in the shop and it's more likely to show up, of course. So since we can't find a level one Submachine gun re-rolling there doesn't seem to make a ton of sense to me. Uh, let's roll here, and we have no lifesteal currently, so I'm going to take 2% lifesteal over to range damage even. Damage we will have to get later, but healing is going to be really important, and we don't currently have any. Take the submachine gun and the gentle alien and roll. Uh, lemonade will cost me 2 HP, give me some percentage damage and gives me more healing. So I will pick that up, because again, we don't currently have any. And baby Gecko is probably good enough on this character as well. And then again, I'm going to combine into level twos for the rule of thumb that we established earlier. So what I would like is to hit two damage per second or two damage per shot on my level two weapons before we go into next wave, because then that'll just be so many fewer projectiles. The floaters are spawning and much quicker time to kill on the enemies. Um, so I'm going to buy a couple random items and I'll probably combine weapons next wave to maximize my per weapon damage. Uh, 10% attack speed, that will offset my current attack speed. Crit chance is also not horrible, because when we crit, we get 2 damage, um, because it does get rounded up. But I think we will just roll here. I'll take the harvesting, it's still early enough we can do that, and we'll take 2 ranged damage, perfect. Then I will buy the gecko and the butterfly, still at 1 times 3 damage there. Let's roll again. Another submachine gun at level two, so we can buy that. Then if I combine these, do we get two damage on these? Okay, perfect. So that worked very well. Obviously, fairy is, is great for the renegade in general, so we will pick that up. And then we'll go to wave six. So now we have five weapons that all do two damage each. Getting to a level four weapon would help a lot as well, of course, though less than you might imagine because the attack speed bonus is not super important for submachine guns, and the damage bonus is less uh, impressive because we're playing the Renegade. Still lots of projectiles, but this is much more manageable now that we're doing two damage per shot. Any chance we can kill this thing? Probably not, yeah. Our our single target damage is still not uh, what I would describe as excellent. I'll take the movement speed there. We'll buy a level 1 SMG. Um, okay, we still have 2 times 3 damage on all of our other SMGs. I'll buy the fairy, and then I guess I'll upgrade this. So I could basically go to only 3 weapons and have a level 4 weapon. I don't think that is going to be worth it. I don't think it's worth it to lock either of those two level one items. Oh, I should definitely be killing the eggs. I just sort of out of habit let them spawn, but <laughs> this build does not have single target damage, so we can put ourselves under a lot of pressure by letting the eggs hatch. Paint a hit there. And with only 15 HP, every hit I tank is extremely dangerous, of course. This looks like it's going better, but remember that we are still at all times two hits away from death. Uh, 
All right, have survived that wave. I will lose two HP for the Lumberjack shirt. Alien Baby. So we have a tremendous amount of HP debt. This will help with that, but 8% enemy movement speed is super dangerous. I think this is actually a spot where Alien Baby from a box is the correct thing to pick. Uh, you will almost never see me take that item. Um, this may actually be like the first time I've bought it on video uh, because it's so dangerous to increase enemy movement speed. It's up to plus 11% now. You take so many more hits, especially against elites. But this character is so desperate for HP that I think it might be worth it to do that. Take some life steal there and we'll take the ranged damage. And then now I will, because we got this, uh, this submachine gun, at a level 3, I'm going to combine to a level 4 for the king bonus. So now we have an attack speed bonus, and our percent damage penalty is a much smaller now. So our weapons are doing 5 and 3 damage, respectively. I don't think we want to buy the baby elephant, even though it's a unique item. At least not yet, not until we have more HP. I'm going to roll a couple times. Fertilizer we can buy at least without losing health, so I will do that. And I'm going to take the Peacock. We'll be going into wave 9, so this is going to be a huge XP bonus for us. And the little muscly dude can also help with our HP problems. Going up to 3 damage per shot is definitely nice for this character. Enemy move speed won't be a massive problem yet, although it does make the chargers much more dangerous, but it's when you have a lot of projectiles on the field, like wave 14, or the on elite fights, um, are where it becomes really, really devastating. So we are going to have to be very careful on those waves, and if I lose on those waves, uh, then it's going to come back to the decision that we made to buy that very risky item this early. So keep an eye on those waves later on um, to see whether this pays off or not. That can be something useful to do is to pin, when you make a decision, uh, pin that in your mind to if it's a decision that won't indicate whether it's been good or bad until quite a bit later. Um, make sure that you recognize when the thing happens that resulted from that decision. And usually what you should try to do is make a decision and then predict when it could go well or when it could go badly sometime in the future so that you can keep an eye out for when the consequences of that decision make themselves known. We take the peacock here and the silver bullet. We cannot, I guess I could, should have bought the muscly dude going into wave nine, especially with the peacock. I thought I could buy both, but I couldn't afford both. Boxing Glove, actually mildly interesting for this character. We don't have any knockback currently, and we don't have a whetstone, although we would buy one. But Wave 11 could be pretty dangerous, given our still quite low damage output, so the Boxing Glove could help push away the rib cages. I think it actually is worth buying it. It costs us 2 HP, but we get some percent damage back, which is still very valuable. And since we have... Uh, such rapid attacks, the knockback, even three knockback on the submachine gun, will help protect us quite a bit. And we've increased enemy movement speed, so that's uh, more important as well, because there's all of the enemies this wave are moving faster, and the rib cages on wave 11 are going to be moving much faster as well. I would be interested to try this build with slingshots as well. Um, I think the damage output would just be too low, but it's it's possible because slingshot's an efficient enough weapon. It's possible that it's just trivial. I do see this loot alien, and I want to go get it, but because we have peacock and still pretty low HP, I do need to be very careful about my movement. Huge number of levels, though, and 690 income, so that's great. The snail, awesome find, helps us. Even small reductions in enemy speed are going to be huge for this character to undo the damage that we've done there. Taking the gentle alien for sure will take three ranged damage. Um, and then do I want... 
I think I'll just take 3% life steal. If I can get to like 15%, we'll heal so quickly because of the number of projectiles we're outputting that we will, our low HP pool won't matter as much. Movement speed, crit chance to increase our damage output, or do I roll for something more important? I'm just going to take crit chance. Submachine guns only crit for 1.5, but they attack so frequently that it's still worth it, I think, to buy crit chance on them. Uh, focus, this is going to cost us 3% attack speed and only give us 6% um, damage. But when we have such highly negative percent damage, even small amounts are worth a lot. So I am going to buy that. We'll take this to boost my HP, and I'll take that, going to 11% lifesteal. We don't need the scar. We're already past wave 11. I don't need the... Although it is percent damage, so it cost me 2 HP. Um, yeah, maybe that's still worth it, just to try to get my damage up to an amount where we can actually kill the elite. I, I am v quite concerned about fighting the elite soon. I will buy the leather vest here, or the mushroom, or neither. <laughs> um, losing 3 max HP, very dangerous, of course. Dodge, not a huge uh, concern for this character. I don't think we're going to end up building dodge as a defensive stat. But Leather Vest still just a very efficient item, and our armor's quite low. Uh, Mushroom, not huge for this character in terms of what we're actually trying to do, though we have a fairy, so that does give us more regeneration as well. I think I will buy the Mushroom for the, per for the damage output, and I think I will lock the Leather Vest roll here. I'm still looking for more... Um, more in more submachine guns. <laughs> really need to hit my sixth weapon here. We could buy a different gun as well, though we do have focus, so that would cost us a little bit of attack speed. But also, when we're trying to level up all our weapons to level four for the king bonus, it's easier to do that usually if you just focus on one kind of weapon at a time. The snail definitely helping out we're, I feel, much less at risk from the enemy movement speed than I did before we had the snail. 11% is a pretty significant boost to enemy movement speed. Though, again, we aren't facing the rib cages yet. We aren't facing the uh, the projectiles yet. Like, this, this level has no projectile firing enemies. So, the real danger from enemy movement speed increases hasn't shown up yet. Looking forward to that gecko, because obviously we're leaving a lot of money on the ground. Here, I'll just take three armor, and then I'm going to reroll here. Four regeneration isn't awful, but I would really like to find max HP, though I will just take 3% lifesteal. More enemy speed, but we also get more enemies and more movement speed ourselves on the field. That's not bad. Alloy is pretty good for us. It gives us range damage and crit chance, which are both helpful, and we're not really building dodge, I don't think. For that reason, if so if I buy the alloy, it's maybe better not to buy the leather vest. We also did just get more armor, and our max HP is really low. So I think I'm going to buy the alloy, not buy leather vest, because we're reducing our dodge anyways. I will buy the takeout, and I will roll here. Okay, well, obviously, on the Renegade, we're going to take a Nuke Launcher, because that, that is uh, just so much fun. So, when we get the Nuke Launcher, we're definitely going to pick it up. And then I will take the Beanie. This can help me dodge the Elite. Roll one more time. And <laughs> Obliterator will be good for fighting Elites, too. But let's definitely buy the Plastic Explosive. Uh, I almost locked Blindfold out of habit, but I think 5% crit chance on submachine guns is just not amazing. Um... And I don't think with our negative damage, the Obliterator is going to be necessary to fight the Elites. Alright, how quickly can we kill this thing? Re reasonably quickly, it looks like. Especially if I stand close to it, but don't just walk into every attack it makes. Having to play relatively carefully around the floater here. I let the Elite charge at me there because I knew that would mean all of our shots would focus it. And on the Renegade, when all your shots are focusing something, your damage output increases. So I was pretty confident that we'd be able to kill it before it actually reached me for the damage. 
Getting some crates dropping as well, which is nice. I would say we're probably uh, out of the woods on this build. Like, we've reached the point where we're gaining in strength. Because these two characters are very strong in the late game. Um, sure, I'll take the baby with a beard. Why not? Okay, and we'll take an anvil. Uh, this is obviously huge for the king, and 9 max HP is massive as well. So the anvil's going to upgrade our weapons to level 4, giving us pretty significant boosts. Take the nuke launcher and the plastic explosive, and roll... Uh, this submachine gun can help our anvil upgrade our weapons faster. Propeller hat, I will take. We offset the percent damage loss, and we now have much more respectable HP, so I would say things are going pretty well. And of course, we have a baby with a beard and a tripled nuke launcher on the Renegade, so... Hard to feel bad about the run when you've got these explosions going off. Still losable, I would say, but we're past the bit where things are incredibly hard. Because our, our damage output is good, but not amazing, and our our defenses are still not um, spectacular. Once we get a few more level 4 weapons, which the anvil guarantees that we will, then things will start to look really good, because that will boost our damage output significantly. And in the meantime, I'm just going to focus on increasing my HP. Candle, obviously recycling that. Uh, bonus attack speed. I guess now that we have the nuke launcher, that's pretty good. So let's pick that up. Tentacle, we can take what got upgraded. We've got another level 3 SMG. So... I'm actually going to combine this and then buy another level 2. So we just get another level 4 weapon. That's still two total upgrades th that the anvil needs to do uh, in order to get to two level 4s. Because either it could upgrade our level 3s twice or it could upgrade our level 2s, our level 2 once. Um, so this doesn't cost us the anvil, but also give me another level 4 weapon now for the pretty significant king bonus. Roll here. Jeff's shades, we would be taking damage constantly, which isn't great, but we do have regeneration and lifesteal, so I think we can afford that, and increasing our damage output is pretty good. Uh, I'll take the fertilizer here. No longer costs me HP, and the bonus harvesting is still going to be useful if uh, wave 13. I, I like this combo a lot because you have this, like, very difficult early game that pays off in a pretty spectacular end game once all the bonuses come online. So it's a real... Started from the bottom, now I'm here a moment. Though still producing so many, uh... <laughs> projectiles from the floaters. I'm getting distracted from my commentary, because I'm still actually having to do quite a lot of dodging here. Let's take some max HP, just to make my dodging a little bit easier, and then we will again go up to another level 4 gun. Do I want a level 3 obliterator? You know what, I think I let's do that, that's going to be fun. So we're going to combine the submachine guns and buy the obliterator. Uh, so now... We only need three anvil ticks to upgrade all our weapons to level four. The duct tape we will buy, the propeller hat will buy. We've already got a boxing glove, so we don't need that in order to increase my damage. But the obliterator, this is going to help us with the elite, because what, what obliterators are good for is killing elites quickly, uh, which is something that this build could struggle with. I actually need to manually target it, because the obliterator shots kept going to something, going at something else. 
I do really enjoy the triple obliterator shots. It's just fun to watch them. Renegade King is uh, conceptually a funny combination as well because of the the name. I guess we're we're uh, Napoleon exiled to the island um, uh, by some by this entire shop to boost my damage. We're almost at positive damage, so we're really getting there. Community support, I actually don't think we need on this build. It won't give me that much attack speed, and we already have a hundred percent. Uh, so, but I will buy the coffee for sure. Down to only 47 HP again, so I do need to be a little bit careful with how much I'm reducing my health. I will take the sunglasses. Our armor is fine, and our crit chance could definitely go up. And power generator. This is a small bonus to our percent damage, because remember, it all gets multiplied by our renegade damage reduction. But again, when our percent damage is this low, pretty helpful. And the ugly tooth offsets the alien baby. I will say I would I have been quite impressed with Alien Baby this run. We were able to offset the penalty pretty well. Um, and when we knew all we had to do was get through the next like five waves and we would be fine. This actually worked out very well. So not an item that you're usually going to see me pick up because it is it's extremely risky to pick it up. But this was a spot where it was actually quite good, I think. I don't think Alien Baby is, like, the worst item in the game. That's probably Esty's couch, but it's pretty darn close. So finding a use for it here is pretty nice. Uh, we'll recycle the medical turret. Bonus lifesteal. I think I'll just take the HP. We will take small amounts of percent damage again. I will buy the, uh, actually, why did, why did my percent damage, oh, because, because of the king upgrade, uh, the, the anvil, I was like, why did my percent damage go from minus 10 to minus 3, we only bought 12%, which should only be like a, a 2 point whatever increase, 2.2, 2. um, so, I was confused when we jumped by seven points, but of course the anvil upgraded one of our weapons to level four, and then the king upgrade kicked in, boosting our percent damage. So it all works together. We'll buy this, and now we're at positive damage. Uh, the lucky charm here, we lose a ranged damage, but 30 luck is probably worth it. And then let's roll again. I will boost my lifesteal for sure. We don't have a Gummy Berserker, so I will pick that up for a small percent damage boost. Also note that our Nuke Launcher was the last weapon to receive the Anvil upgrade, because of course it was. Still could use more geckos or Sif's relic, as we we're scattering materials all over the map. Spicy sauce, I will take. Marksmanship, we're recycling again. Band weapon for these or band item for these runs. 
Uh, still don't really need dodge percent. Let's roll here, and yeah, just max HP is the only thing that will really change this uh, build at this point. Max HP and level 1 items in order to build our percent damage. That's going to increase our damage output the most. Losing one ranged damage for the Peaceful Bee, is that worth the percent damage? Probably not, so we're going to roll past that. Bag will still pay for itself. Takeout, still probably good, increasing our movement speed. And do we have a mushroom already? Can't remember if we bought it this run or in a previous run. We do, so we don't we don't need to buy the mushroom. Sharp Bullet, I will buy, though. And Potato, I will buy as well, of course. Obviously, we lose some piercing damage with the Sharp Bullet, but it's just more explosions with our nuke launcher, so still going to be great. With our newly level 4 nuke launcher, even. Uh, medical turret actually is quite good with the Renegade, by the way. I've, I know I've passed on it a couple times, but it's a ton of healing because it triples the projectile. But this build doesn't really need more healing, so I'm passing on it. I'm going to buy the crit chance here. Whoa, that's a lot of level 4 items. Uh, well, we can reduce our regeneration by quite a bit to pick those up, but um, that seems still good to me. We Do we have... Yeah, it's this this run where we have the Jeff's Shade. So we will be taking two damage per second, but that's still fine. I will take the extra stomach here for a ton of bonus HP, which we do need, even though currently we have the ideal quantity. Um, and then I'll take the Bloody Hand to kill the Elite faster. Do one reroll here, and Cake, we've already got one, I think. No, no, we didn't, so we gained some percent damage. And now our HP is high enough that... Uh, Armor increases will be good. I think I probably buy the stone skin as well anyways. Just boost all of our defensive stats. Since our damage output is, is quite ridiculous at this point with all of our leveled weapons. And the obliterator just... Uh, well, it does what it says on the tin uh, to elites. Obliterator overall, a fairly weak weapon in Brotato. Um, but... If you have a build that struggles to kill elites and roll into one, then it will definitely do the job, because it's really good for single target damage. This applies less well if you're on mobile and can't manually target, because manually targeting down the elites with the obliterator is part of making sure you kill them faster. But for players on PC, it's going to be a huge benefit for a build that otherwise is struggling to kill an elite. You don't even need any ranged damage or anything to just make it the best single target uh, DPS in the game. Practical research, we don't care about it at all. We'll recycle that. I'll definitely recycle the Retromations hoodie because we have no dodge. A little unfortunate because I do like this item, but we would lose regeneration and gain nothing. Oh, wait, no, we'd gain HP because uh, we're the king. Level 4 items give us HP. Kind of forgot about that. Um, yeah, 5 HP from that. Maybe it was worth losing some attack speed for the hoodie, and then it also makes any future dodge we buy good. So, uh, something to think about. Yeah, actually, because I have the potato and the leather vest there locked there, so we'd have immediately undone the, the damage and just gained some HP. So, definitely a mistake to recycle the, the hoodie there. Um, we'll buy this, even though it costs me some dodge because it increases my percent damage. No longer need the fertilizer because it's wave 19. I didn't even think about what I had locked in the shop or the king bonus when I recycled it. So it's like, uh, I can't lose 16% attack speed. But 
As it turns out, that would have been definitely correct. Because not only does it do that, it makes any dodge we find this wave much better. Uh, obviously, it doesn't matter because it's, it's wave 19 and we're just ending the game. Um, here, what, what we buy at this point really doesn't matter, but still good to make correct decisions. And up to 750. Uh, I can't remember if we have a book. <laughs> One thing that is kind of annoying about Renegade in GMO is it doesn't give you the, the icon. In normal Rotato, it has a little icon that tells you whether you have the item or not. So I could look in my inventory, but let's just find out. Okay, turns out we had one. I know we have a mushroom already by the uh, range damage and the crit chance. And then, sure, more crit chance and a tree. And we will roll bag we've already got, and the money doesn't matter. So I actually just roll past all this. I will take the Cyclops Worm. A uh, small percentage damage at the cost of crit chance is actually not good for us anymore. But coffee will still be good. Cute monkey costing me range damage, not so much. And we can't afford anything from this shop. So let's go to the final battle. The extra stomach got us 15 HP, by the way, so worked out pretty well, even though we have the damage loss or the HP loss from all of the damage over time items. That boss fully dodged all my obliterator shots. It it went into stage, I fired, it went into stage two and switched directions to avoid them. So really sick plays from the boss there. Uh, all right, so looking at our economic stats. We ended up with 493 saved off the coupons. Not bad at all. Um, 69 HP saved uh, healed from the tentacles. So as always, you know, you know what to do. Um, 19 HP from the extra stomach, though uh, 15 HP that mattered. 135 from the bag, even though we got it pretty late. And other than that, just a solid performance once we got past the very difficult early game. The trick here, I think, actually was the alien baby. This this uh, gave us the HP that we needed to be able to buy more level one items and find our submachine guns before we died. So this item actually ended up being quite clutch. And uh, even though it is normally terrible, really interesting that that's what made the difference in this run. All right, my friends, hope that you enjoyed this challenge run, of course, as always, uh, feel free to leave a comment or like the video or both, of course, uh, which does help me out with the algorithm. YouTube does heavily favor interactions, so I do appreciate you taking the time to do that. And of course, you can subscribe to my channel for more Brotato and other strategy game analysis. Cheers, my friends. I'll catch you next time.